Number 18. In 1986, a gargantuan iceberg broke away from the Ross Ice Shelf in Antarctica. It is approximately a rectangle 160 kilometers long, 40 kilometers wide, and 250 meters thick. Letter A. What is the mass of this iceberg given that the density of ice is 917 kilogram per cubic meter? All right. So just recall the simple uh, density formula, right? Density will be equal to mass divided by volume. All right. They told us the uh, density of the item, right, of ice. It's uh, the mass is in kilograms and the area, uh, excuse me, the volume here is in cubic meters. So first thing I realize is that the, um, you know, we know the density of the ice here and we know the volume, but we, you know, they gave us kilometers and then they gave us meters. All right. So we're definitely going to want to convert these both to meters. So let's just do that quickly. Just multiply by 1000. So this is 40,000. Uh, kilometers, excuse me, 40,000 meters. This is then 160,000 meters. And now we can go about and calculate the volume, right? Length times width times height, basically. So the density, so in other words, uh, what I'm going to do, I know I can solve for the volume. I know they gave me the density, so now I can solve for the mass, right? Just simply cross multiply the D and the V, so it's basically density times volume. And then the mass now will equal the density of 917 multiplied then by the volume, which is going to be length times width times height. So it's 40,000 times 160,000 times then 250. All right, and let's see what we get. It's going to be quite a large mass. Sorry for the noise, just have to open up the calculator. All right, so 917 times 40,000 times 160,000 times then 250. And this is now going to be one point. Uh, four seven or so if I round 1.47 times 10 raised to the 15th all right and that's in terms of kilograms so we're talking about 1 trillion no excuse me what is that what comes after trillion I don't know last time I checked my bank account I, I don't uh, I don't recall ha 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 all right that was a poor attempt at a joke um so the uh this i don't know quintillion i don't know anyway big number okay moving on sorry guys let it be getting distracted so uh how much heat transfer in joules is needed to melt it well we're talking about phase change right to melt it so you know that we're going to be using this uh the heat energy here required uh to change phase formula basically right so this is the heat energy that's required in a phase change it's multiplied by the mass of the item that is changing phase multiplied then by the latent heat in this case, we're talking about fusion because we're talking about melting, all right? So basically just plug it on in. So we know the mass here of 1.47 times 10 to the 15th. And the latent heat of fusion for basically of ice here is going to be 3, I think it's 334. Now just be careful, right? This is in kilojoules, all right? Uh, they want it in joules, so this number has to be multiplied by 10 to the third, or basically multiplied by 1,000, right? Or in other words, just keeping it consistent how I'm approaching the problem, 334,000, okay? And then simply multiply it on out. I'm going to use the exact number here. Uh, so basically 4.9. 4.90 times 10 raised to the 20th joules, okay? So that's how much energy... Um, will be required to melt it. It's a lot of energy. So now let's take a look at letter C. Letter C now is asking, uh, how many years would it take sunlight alone to melt ice this thick if the ice absorbs an average of 100 watts per square meter and uh, 12 hours per day? Okay. So there's one. Th there is one assumption I realize that we're going to have to make. All right. It depends on... You know, they gave us a wattage per square area. Now, you know, what square area are we talking about in terms of the ice, right? Most notably, an iceberg, most of it should be submerged, okay? So I'm going to assume then that only the top area here is absorbing the sunlight, right? If you assume then it's all three dimensions of this thing, right, on every side, then your calculation is going to be different than mine. I don't think that's necessarily reasonable, but, uh, you know, it doesn't really give me any additional guidance here. But I, I think the top would be the most reasonable to work off of. Uh, in any case, 
so now we got to calculate time, all right? And they're giving us watts. Oh boy. So now I'm thinking, well, as soon as I see watts in this chapter, I start thinking power, right? So let me write my power formula. Power is equal to change in energy per time. Another word for energy in this formula, or another letter for energy is Q, right? Heat energy. So I'm going to plug in Q there because the only type of energy in the problem is heat energy here. Now, um, basically, they want us to solve for time, right? It says how many years. So let's just reorganize this to solve for time. So that tells me that I have to know, I have to know the total amount of energy that will be absorbed or lost or whatever the case is. In this problem, the energy is being absorbed. And then I have to know the power, okay, um, in which that object is absorbing the energy, meaning I have to know the rate of energy absorption, basically. All right. So this is really what I'm after, the power, okay? Now, remember, power has the unit of watt, all right? And they told us 100 watts, but they told us 100 watts per square meter. So if I write that number out, sometimes if you think by using dimensional analysis, this can help. I have the watts there, but it's, right, the meter squared is basically divided into that. I need just watts, so that means I got to get rid of meter squared. So I know that in terms of dimensional analysis, I'm going to be multiplying by some meter square value. What do you think is, I don't know what that number is up there. Um, what do you think is a reasonable uh, guess as to, or an educated guess, um, as to what meter square value we're going to be plugging in, right? Meter square, you know, is an area. So basically, right, it would make sense that I'm going to be plugging in the area of whatever I deemed appropriate here, uh, the area that is absorbing that sunlight, okay? Because that's basically what this number is saying. It's saying that 100 watts of energy at a rate of 100 watts, remember, that's joules per second, so basically, 100 joules per second is being absorbed by this ice block per square meter, okay? So if I were to break this up, right, you could break this up into all little pieces if you were to think about it. Obviously, this is not to scale. But pretend that these are all square meters, okay? That means every one of these square meters will be absorbing 100 watts. So if I want to find the total wattage, doesn't it make sense that I have to take then the watt per square meter, and then multiply it by the number of square meters I have there. So hopefully that should make sense. So the square meter there will be uh, the, it's 40 by 160. Okay, that's kilometers. You gotta convert that into meters. All right, I did that already over here. So we're going to basically be doing, I'm gonna write the number up here. This is gonna be 40,000 times then 160,000. And that number here is going to get plugged in uh, right there. All right, so it's gonna be 100 multiplied by 40,000, multiplied then by 160,000. Okay, 6.4, so this is 6.4 times 10 to the 11th watts, right? So the total amount of power that the top part of this uh, iceberg is absorbing uh, is 6.4 times 10 to the 11th watts. Now I know this power down there, right? Now I have a unit with just watts. So basically, I can now just plug in. So the time it would take to melt the whole ice would be the amount of energy, okay? The amount of energy that's required to melt it, which we calculate as 4.90, 4.90 times 10 to the 20th, divided by then the, the rate in which the object is absorbing that energy, all right? That should hopefully make sense, 6.4 times 10 to the 11th. And then what do we get? So uh, so we get 4.9 times 10 to the 20th divided by that answer. And here we have, now this works out to be now 7.656 7 or so. Eh, I'm going to do four six figures. Why? I don't know. 656 times, times 10 to the, oh boy, 3. Six, seven, eight, right, times 10 to the eight, and that is now in seconds. Now you might say, oh great, I just gotta convert this into years now. Well, not exactly, <laughs> right? Because it says that this amount of sunlight, and this should kind of make sense, right? That the sunlight is only being, being absorbed for 12 hours out of the day. So now you might wanna think about this, right? We can, we can certainly find now the number of, let's say, hours here, and then we can find out how many 12-hour blocks there are. You could do it that way. 
Right? I mean, you could do this a couple of different ways. Um, so why don't we do, let's see. Where am I going to put it first of all, right? All right. So why don't we do, um, so, yeah. So why don't we first do this? Let's first find then the, well, let's take 12 hours per day. Let's find out how many seconds per day that is. Okay. So we've got 12 hours. Let's convert that into seconds. You know that now in every hour there's 300, or not 300, 3,600 seconds. So I can just simply take 12 and multiply it by 3,600. So this is 43,200. So 43,200 seconds. So this is the amount of time uh, in which the, whatchamacallit, in which the <laughs> glacier uh, will be absorbing sunlight. Now we know that if this is the amount per day, okay, or this is the amount of seconds that the sunlight is hitting it, and this is the total amount of seconds that we need, that the uh, iceberg needs to absorb at a rate of 100 watts per meter square, I think we can kind of figure out the answer here, right? It's probably just simply going to be a division between the two, all right? So basically now, and you might say, well, wait a minute, doesn't that work out to be unit less, seconds over seconds? Well, technically speaking, right? Technically, this 12 hours is really per day, as they say over here. So, you know, 12 hours per day. And then this would have been this many seconds per day. Okay. And now we can go about and do our division. All right. Which, and then you can actually see how the units would set up. Let me just do that first. So we're trying to find out how many uh, days, basically. All right. So let's uh, take the 7.65... 7.656 times 10 to the 8 seconds, times 10 to the 8 seconds. Multiply that now, multiply that now by the reciprocal of this, because I need seconds on the bottom, day on the top, and then this is 43,200, and then realize that the seconds cancel, but now I'm left with days. I don't need days, I want years, so now you got to go convert this to years, right? That there are 365 days... You can put in 365.25. It doesn't matter to me. I don't know what I don't know what I'm doing there with the number. There it is. And this is then per, for every year. Okay. And let's just calculate it. This problem is getting annoying, right? All right. So let's just be done with it. So now divide this by, divide that number 7.656 times 10 to the 8 divided by 43,200 multiplied then by 365. And only 48 and a half years or so. So 48.6-ish, if I round years, will it take for just the sunlight to melt this gargantuan piece of ice? Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for tuning in. We really do enjoy helping you. And we do hope that you have received a lot of help. If we have helped you out at all. Give us a hand. Hit that subscribe button. We appreciate it very much. Take care.